Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Coming off a nice Monday night. We went 4 and 2 plus 1.56 units. Top bet swept 2 and 0. Oh. Um, I love it. Let's put it in the past though. Let's go for another green night tonight. Six games again. Let's go. Welcome to The Source. The Source. Hey, get the Suez. First up, Washington on the road in Orlando, 7 p.m. start. This total opens up at 226. Line opens up Orlando plus three. Check it out. This line has moved four whole points. We're now looking at Orlando minus one. So Orlando's now favored. Um, action seems to be all over the Wizards now. You would think with line movement like that, four points, that that would indicate that Kyle Kuzma is unlikely to play. He's listed as questionable. We'll have to wait and see. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Orlando minus 3.8. So we're looking at what? Two point lean, two and a half point lean on the mat. Real quick, let's start with the injuries. I just said Kyle Kuzma was questionable like 30 seconds ago. I don't know why I said that. He's out. <laughs> uh, Kyle Kuzma isn't going to play. Jalen Suggs also out for the match. So Wizards and Magic, this is a division rivalry here, but the rivalry has really been pretty one-sided for a while now. Wizards have beat the Magic seven straight times. You need to rewind all the way back to 2020 to find the last time Orlando beat Washington. They've met twice this year so far, and the Wizards have pretty much blown them out both times. They beat them by 20 in Washington and they beat them by 19 in Orlando. Something I noticed here, look at the shot distribution for the Wizards over the last three weeks. They're third for mid-range, they take a ton of mid-range shots, 10th um, for the rim, so they attack the basket, 30th from three-point. This team has just stopped taking outside shots and it's not working. They're just four and seven in their last 11. Good news for the Wizards though, the Orlando Magic defense can't stop anybody right now. The Orlando Magic's strongest shot zone defensively is mid-range and they're 23rd in the last three weeks. That's their best. Uh, this team is bottom seven in basically every defensive category. Every defensive category except one. They have one redeemable quality on defense. Orlando forces turnovers. They're fourth in the NBA in the last three weeks and forced turnover rate. Wizards just 24th in offensive turnover rate. So that's a nice little angle for Orlando here. Washington's been struggling to protect the basketball. Orlando's been taking the basketball away. Overall though, we're talking about the Magic as favorites now, which means they have to win the game. If you're talking about against the spread record, the Magic have been great this year. I think they're like fifth or sixth in the NBA, but they're laying points, which means they have to win the game. Orlando's just two and six in their last eight straight up. This is a must win game for Washington too. Their season's on the line at this point. Um, the Bulls got hot, so the Bulls have taken the 10 seed. They're now two full games up on the Wizards, who are sitting in the 11. Uh, only, what, 11 games to play? It's looking bad. <laughs> the Wizards, if they lose this game, I would pretty much close the curtain on the Wizards seat. So I know it's definitely on the square side. It seems like the books are trying to get us to bet Washington. Um, but I really think the Wizards win this one, so I'm on Washington. Update. So this line actually moved since I started recording. It's now down to a pick -em. So let's over to Odd Jam and see the best value we can get for a Wizards bet right now. And it looks like we can still get Washington plus one at minus 110 on points bet. So let's lock it in next game. Cleveland Cavs on the road in Brooklyn to play the Nets. It's a 7.30 p.m. start time. Totals all the way down at 218. And this line opens up Brooklyn plus one. Another line that's been on the move here. We're now looking at Brooklyn plus three. And the public is all over Cleveland. Cleveland. Everybody you have ever met is betting the Cavs tonight. It's the most public play on the board today. It's the most public play I've seen uh, in at least a week. Uh, everyone's betting Cleveland. Let's take a look at our spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Brooklyn plus 5.2. So we're looking at about a two-point lean on the Cavs. Jared Allen may return to the lineup for Cleveland tonight. Uh, he's missed five games and it's been night and day defense as far as their interior defense. Remember when the Cavs were leading the NBA and protecting the basket pretty much this whole season? Since Jared Allen got hurt in the last five games, they're just 17. Here's the thing though, the Cleveland Cavs as a whole aren't playing that much worse without Jared Allen. Sure, the rim protection numbers are down, definitely, but the offense is slightly up, uh, perimeter defense is slightly up, forced turnover rate is up. So as a whole, the Cleveland Cavs are playing efficiency-wise on a pretty similar level to how they were before Jared Allen got hurt. I'm not saying Cleveland is better without Jared Allen at all. Of course not. What I'm saying is his return to the lineup will probably be overvalued by the public. So if he does come back, we can probably get an extra point or two on the Brooklyn Nets side. As far as the Brooklyn Nets go, we already know that we have a mismatch on the offensive side. Cleveland's defense, what's their weakness? Defending the perimeter. That's what it's been all year. Sure, it's been slightly up since Allen got hurt, but he might return tonight. Either way, it's still not a great perimeter defense. What does Brooklyn do? Shoot a ton of threes. 
fifth in the NBA in three-point frequency in the last three weeks. So the looks from outside are going to be there tonight for Brooklyn. Whether or not they sink them, we'll have to wait and see. Also, it seems like the Nets are being undervalued a bit heading into this game because they've lost three straight. And the general consensus is, oh, the Nets aren't as good as we thought they were. We thought they were going to be this magical Cinderella team. Now they've lost three straight. But look at who they've lost to at OKC, Sacramento, Denver. I mean, Oakley C and Sacramento, that's two of the hottest teams in the NBA. Then they lost by six to the Nuggets. I'm not ripping a team down for losing by six points to the one seed. I'm seeing value on the net side. I'm going with Brooklyn here, regardless of whether or not Jared Allen plays. So give me the net. So let's head over to Odd Jam and steal some value here and check it out. We got a good one here. We can get Nets plus four and a half for minus 115 on Bet MGM. So I'm definitely taking that. Brooklyn plus four and a half, minus 115, bet MGM, next game. Detroit is on the road in Atlanta to play the Hawks. This is a 7.30 p.m. start. Total opens up 238. Line opens up Atlanta minus 14. This line actually dropped down to 12 and a half last night for a couple hours, but by this morning, it's back up to 14 on basically all sports books. Um, actually, it's actually slightly leaning Detroit here. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Atlanta minus 6.38. So that's a huge lean on the Pistons. But this Pistons team, you can't use any of these analytics. So who the hell knows who's even playing? Here's the Pistons. Ready for this? Hampton questionable. Livers questionable. Bogdanovich out. Burks out. Diallo out. Jalen Duran out. Isaiah Stewart out. How the hell are we going to bet this game, man? I'm also not laying 14 in Atlanta. I'm skipping it. Next game. Update. DeJounte Murray out for the Hawks. Doesn't matter. I'm not betting this game. But I had to turn the camera on because Prop Beaver says he has a hammer lock. What's up, Chiefs? Hammer lock of the century. Onyeka Okungwu. Over nine and a half points against the Pistons. Starting to get juiced up a little bit, so I'd get that in right now. He's cashed four straight against them. He's hot as hell right now, shooting 87% over his last four games. He's getting the volume. He's getting the minutes. Capella sucks. Bet him. Next up, Spurs are on the road down in Nola to play the Pellies. This is an 8 p.m. start. Total opens up at 235, and this line opens up Pelicans minus 7. The line has moved dramatically in this one. We're now looking at Pelicans minus 13. This is probably a reaction to the Spurs injury report, which we'll get to in just a second. And as you would expect, uh, action definitely leading New Orleans so far. Let's take a quick look at our spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be New Orleans minus 1.2. But again, with all these Spurs injuries, just toss the spreadsheet out. Ready for this? Here's the Spurs. Devontae Graham questionable. Ken Birch out. Zach Collins out. Keldon Johnson out. Jeremy Sohan out. Devin Vassell out. What the hell? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm skipping this one too. Next game, Boston Celtics on the road in Sacramento to play the Kings. This is a 10 p.m. start. Total opens up at 239, and this line opens up Sacramento plus four. This line's moved a point and a half so far. We're now looking at Sacramento plus five and a half. Um, Published pretty split even. Sharp money definitely leaning Celtics early. Let's take a quick look at our spreadsheet. According to the model of the line for this game, check this. Should be Sacramento minus 5.09. So a huge lean on the Kings analytically. Sacramento just played a wild basketball game last night in Utah. They were down 16 at the half. Came all the way back. Took the lead in the fourth quarter. And then they went back and forth down the stretch. They ended up losing a heartbreak. After that disheartening loss, they get on a late night flight back to Sacramento for a home game tonight against the Celtics, who are 23 and 14 on the road, second best road record in the NBA. Against the Celtics team that's coming off a heartbreaking loss to the Jazz themselves, the difference is they had two full days rest in between. Against the Celtics team that has Robert Williams III back in their lineup, starting at center for the first time in three weeks. Kevin Herter most likely returning to the lineup for the Kings tonight. That's huge. Not only is he their best outside shooter but after last night's game he's got fresh legs that's huge but boston third in the nba in three-point defense over the last three weeks that perimeter defense has arrived for the celtics i think the kings are going to score points in this game for sure uh they're just way too good of a team to get shut out defensively like that it's the king's defense i don't trust on this back-to-back -back. i think boston's going to put up a 130 piece at least uh so i'm on the celtics but marcus smart being questionable does worry me so i'll keep an eye on that but um, 99.9%. .9%. I'm on the Celtics, whether or not smart play. So let's head over to Odd Jam, see what kind of value we can get. Uh, we're looking for Boston here. Looks like our best bet's going to be Boston minus five or minus 108 on Barstool. So let's lock it in next game. OKC is on the road in LA to play the Clippers. This is a 10.30 p.m. start. Total opens up at 236 and this line opens up Clips minus seven and a half. This line actually drops down to six and a half, but then a bunch of action comes in on the Clippers, then it moves back up to seven. We're still looking at Clips minus seven now. Public slightly leading Clippers, uh, sharp money definitely leading Clippers. Let's take a quick look at our spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Clips minus 6.08. 
So we're looking at a slight lean on OKC, maybe point, point and a half. Oklahoma City as road underdogs this year. Ready? 18, 8, and 3 against the spread. That's a 69.2% hit rate as road dogs. How do you lay seven points to that team? Not to mention the Clippers defense. Well, the Clippers defense have been playing better. Let's give them some credit. Over the last three weeks, they've definitely shown some improvements. Sixth against the three-point shot. Sixth against the mid-range shot. 15th protecting the basket. That's the sweet spot on this Clippers defense. If you want to beat the Clips, you got to attack the rim. Zubats is a nice center. He's solid. I like Zubats, but he doesn't have the lateral quickness to really keep opposing guards and wings from getting to the rim. In case you didn't know, OKC loves attacking the basket. They've been top five in shot frequency at the rim this entire season. SGA loves taking it to the rack. No need to ramble on about this one. I'm definitely taking the points. Give me the thunder here. So let's head over to Odd Jam, see if we can snag some value on this one and check it out. Odd Jam's hooking us up. We're getting a hook here. Um, so give me OKC plus seven and a half at minus 115 on bet MGM. If anything changes with any of these bets, I will let you know on Twitter. So give me a follow there if you're interested. Also, if you want the final tickets and the list of exactly what I'm betting and how much I'm betting on each game, uh, top bets, parlay of the day, that kind of stuff, head over to kylecurms.com or download the Sauce Network app. NBA Tuesday, just six games on tonight, but you know what? There was only six games on last night and we still picked up 1.56 units. How about we go green again? Um, remember to bet responsibly and I'll talk to you on Twitter.